that so strong. I don't remember my name so, so, so well. So you know what I'm doing? In order to, to remember the person, I do sign. I put in my phone, see my name. Alexander Shalom, how did I remember you? Fish. Fish, 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 fire, fire in Hebrew. I'm a sheep, Alexander Shalom. That's it, this way. How do they do so much long? Shlomo in the ass of the microphone. Shlomo, three children, Friday night. <laughs> you know what? Shlomo used to come into this community only Friday night, and he had three children. So I don't remember his name. How do you remember? Shlomo, Friday night, three children. Then suddenly, Shlomo started to come, Shabbat Bunny. Then suddenly, Shlomo started to come, Monday night. And suddenly, Shlomo came, Wednesday night. And now, Shlomo came one month. Every morning, 6 o'clock in the morning. Six. Now his wife is calling Rabbi Bakhtin. My husband is sitting more. More from what he's sitting. So he's like, let What exactly do you think of it? Shlomo and Yazo is a gift of this year. Gift of God. And he brought out another, another gift. It's not that cheap. When you, know, when you have a gift, sometimes you want to be unique. You don't even know whether. Shlomo said, if I have a gift, I have to bring other. And I want to come in every morning. I want to invite Shlomo to come to say a few words on the Masechet. Let's cut the hand. Let me give you the hand. Shlomo, three children, five minutes. Thank you, Rabbi. Good morning, everyone. My name is Shlomo uh, Niazo, and uh, it's really good to be here today. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Akadok for the pool, the Bono Shalom, the creator of the world, for giving me the opportunity to meet Amelia Wagner and also bring me to the show BGCC, the place. Yeah. Second of all, I want to thank our amazing Rabbi Wagner for starting this revolution, for getting us together every morning at 6 30 and learning the Maran and the Rat Hashem to train. Uh, was started by our dear rabbi, who will continue to, mo to move without stops with Hashem's help and bring more souls on board with this train for many, many years to come. So yeah. thank you for that. Yeah. I read somewhere that the young Shem Shlomo said there is no greater simcha that is done before Hashem than the flower of finishing the Masechi. As they say, Tamut Torah, to make it flower. I also want to thank our dear organizers, David, David Miera, <laughs> David Davido, Kinsky Miera, and also Ben Wood for organizing this collaboration. I just want to point out two things, what is going on here, how they organize everything. First of all, there's new parking. Anybody wants to come, you can find parking, park across the street. Uh, they get the ticket validated, full breakfast, with coffee, tea, orange juice, warm rooms, Gemara for everyone who really needs to share Gemara, and also much more than that. Uh, you know how we sit on the Passover and we say, we hold the matzah on the right hand and we say, I would say something like this. If Rabbi Wakim would call us every morning to wake us up at 6 o'clock, I would say, this would have been enough. If Rabbi Wakim would only teach us the Gemara every morning with amazing insights, I would say, this would have been enough. And then it's coffee, tea, full breakfast, everything that you desire. All the conditions are here. So thank you for that. Please. Let's give a round of applause for the organizers, for David, uh, for his team, also for the organizers. I also want to say a special thank you to my wife. If it wouldn't be for, for her support, I would not be able to come here. Uh, last but not least, I want to say thank you to my Rebbe, Rebbe Joseph Adil, who gave me a Sao Foundation, desire to learn Torah, put me on a straight path. And the last thing, I really want to say thanks to all the students who came, who, came, who made it happen every morning. And thank you for all your support. All right, so this was a brief introduction. Now we can start. We have finished Gemara, uh, two actually two Gemara. One is Midot, one is Tamid, and Gemara Tamid. Tamid talks about the daily sacrifices, like he's mentioned. It also talks about um, our uh, person should be consistent in anything that he does. If you want to be successful in life, you have to be consistent. Uh, there was a story in Masekhet Tamid that talks about Alexander Makedonsky. Everybody knows Alexander Makedonsky. He was a ruler at that time, and he was a very powerful ruler. He had uh, pretty much the whole world. He conquered the whole world, and he comes and asks questions of the sages. And he says, 
who is called the wise man? Now you have to you have to understand the king uh, king's reaction. What he expects for the sages to praise him. He says, who is the who is called the wise man? And they say the wise man is called somebody who can oversee the future, somebody who can see ten steps ahead of the time. So, like an example, let's say a person is driving. A person who wants to drive a car in a 100 mile zone, in a 100 miles in a 25 mile zone, and if he makes that decision, he will need to understand what's going to happen. Right? He's going to get a ticket, he's going to have to go to the court, he's going to see the judge, he's going to be time away from the family. Many, many things will happen as a result of that. So a person who can oversee the future is definitely called the wise man. So obviously, the king was not happy with the answer. So he asked the next question. The next question that he asked, who is the most strongest man? Now obviously the king thinks he's the strongest because he comes the whole world. But what did the sages say? They said that, uh, unfortunately, the, the strongest man is the one who can conquer his desires. So, We'll go to another example of a car. Let's say a person is driving the car and somebody cuts him off, then uh, shows him a not nice gesture, says bad things, and uh, on top of it all, he tries to stop the car in front of him. Natural reaction of the driver would be to get pissed off, to roll down the windows and start saying not so good words, also showing the gestures, and also cuts for shalom, come out and start a fight. But at that moment, if a person can conquer his desires and basically say, you know what, let me come down, let me control myself, and just say, and hold me a dog, like Rabbi Lachman says, Hashem is in charge. Same thing you can say for many things, like getting up in the morning, uh, looking at the proper things where we should be. You have to control our desires. So, the king was not happy with an answer. Then he moves on to the next question. He says, who is the most wealthiest man? Again, his expectation was that the sages will say that he is the most wealthiest man because he has a lot of treasures for many, many generations to come. But unfortunately, they said, actually, fortunately, they said that the most wealthiest man is the one who's happy with what he has. A wealthy person is someone who is content and joyful, whether he has his financial or marital blessing. By now, you can imagine the reaction of Alexander. He was not happy with the answer. I just want to skip forward the story where Alexander Makedonsky is sitting by a spring one day and he wants to eat bread. And uh, he had the salty fish and he wanted to wash his hands. Some say that he splashed with the water against his face and then he realized that this water has some special qualities. Uh, he understood that the water is basically coming from Ganesh. So he decided to follow the trail of the water and he comes to a gate, it's gates of Ganesh. And he says, he starts screaming, can you open the door? I want to come inside. And the voice from Ganesh, from the gate says, you cannot come, you're not uh, righteous. Only righteous people go through this gate. So he said, since I'm an important man, I'm a king, King Alexander Makedonsky, give me a souvenir, give me a present. So, Somebody gave him uh, an orb, it's a human eye. So he takes it with him, he goes to the back of the kingdom, and the most phenomenal thing started happening. He basically put the eye on a scale, uh, and he put on the other side his gold, silver, anything that he had. And he sees that the gold, uh, the eye overweighs the gold. He doesn't understand how can it be. The eye is only what, 200 grams? And the gold that he has is you know, where it comes. So he calls the sage and he says, What's going on here? Why is this, uh, why is this phenomenon, phenomenon happening? So the sage answered to him, The human eye is never satisfied with the human riches. All we need to do is cover the eyes with some dirt so we can no longer see. As soon as he did it, the gold, the silver, uh, now started to all the way the eye. So from here, we can learn that the human eye always wants more and more until the body, unfortunately, goes under the ground and is buried. So just giving the amount of time that we have, I want to give other congregants the opportunity to speak. I want to thank everyone for coming.
I want to thank everyone for listening to me. May the only single days and continue to learn. Thank you, Rabbi Wachim. Thank you, Rabbi Wachim. Now we're going to turn to Shlomo Niazovic. Friday night, three children. Monday, Monday night, Wednesday night, every morning she's studying, and every Shabbat. There's no place in the phone to put so many. The next week of today, we're going to have another two, and then we're going to do the Siyam Asechet with Kaddish. The next, on behalf of the BJCC Union, don't know. We want to say thank you very much for the center, for giving us the opportunity, for sponsoring and paying the breakfast, for paying the parking, and giving us syllabus to our Baisalman, being the representative of the boys upstairs, Baisalman, the Dalmatica, the nephew, and your wife, to raise your children, to, to be sitting here at Shemir and and everything that the center is doing for us, a small appreciation for everything that we're getting here in this year of let us say amen. amen. The next week of today is going to be a, a posting that every time we see him, he came all the way from Paris. We have now three boys in another community. Two of them is fine, one of them is here. I don't know which one. <laughs> now, one is Benru. Benru ben is a person that you cannot challenge. He's always the first and always the last. You know, sometimes I wake up five o'clock and I'm coming to the synagogue. My wife said, the class that sits on me. I said, yes, but he's a bit the first one. And Ben Hu already is 545 years old. I'm trying to get him here. You can let me. I can find you can fall. You want to get fall? He said, I'm the first one. Don't take my mitzvah. And then the other one is Fisher Hu. But I love about Fisher Hu. He always comes in time. If he decides to come 745, he will never come 744. And will never come 746. Exactly 745. For 10 years that I'm here, the Shabbat of God, 745. Now we change the time, he took him one month to come out. Because now we have to change. When do we change? Do we change? I mean, and then we have another version. Oh, yes, the light in the darkness. Oh, yes, it's with us. All this year at all. Everything that happened in the world happened because of him. The Almighty God will bless you that brings so much light to this community. His name is light, and he's a light. Now, I thought I can deal with two portions, and then came number three, Chazakah. And then the time walking into the cinema, what do you do? Beruchim Ates, Kehal Emunai. His name is Mr. Beruchim. Such easy to remember, right? Every time I see my secret man, David's king, no Tachadun, Beruchim Ke. Kula Shimon Beruchim, Shimon, come here, Papa, come. We love him. Shimon Beruchim, come here. Of standing in Torah, what does she want? Good morning, everyone. I'm Shimon Berufin. I came to the United States in 1975. And I was honored and privileged to end up with the Minyan with the Rabbi Wagner and all my friends, Kohen Galov, Nitsky. The Salmanica Suite, the Mr. Sertare. Since then, I have, uh, since I've been in the United States, I have uh, traveled all over the world and I have had some exotic experiences. And to me, uh, this synagogue is pure pleasure. I have two the favorite synagogues in the world. One is this, and the other one is the other city, the Syrian synagogue in Yerushalayim. I have a, I was always kind of, my son, Goel is here today, uh, I was always thinking what would be my advice, uh, something one, two, three that he can always remember. And what I came up with was, uh, was one, and now with Hashem, and two, take care of your mind and body, and three, do good uh, for others. And uh, Baruch Hashem, uh, uh, he, he, uh, I'm, 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 
uh, I, I'm proud to be the father of Coel. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, some interesting uh, traveling together also. He has a son uh, a year and a half. Uh, what, what, uh, what, what, what I'm uh, enjoying right now is uh, the, the every day that we have been coming for Bodhi uh, Mara and uh, I think uh, uh, sooner or later I'm going to have to come up with a more advanced advice for myself. Baruch <laughs> Hashem, uh, uh, this is pure pleasure uh, to, come, to come to the temple and, and, and it has helped me uh, to, to understand many Torah, and it is sure it's going to work. Uh, it has helped me to, uh, to keep uh, the mitzvot uh, and, all, and all of that. And I look forward to do more. Uh, I thank you all for listening and uh, have a great day. Yes, the, the final one. The last one is always a favorite. <laughs> We need you. 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 We and every year I'm giving the project, he said, Rabbi, you know, I'm going to you Doesn't mean God help. Meaning, I'm not coming for sure. Just the next moment. I remember the first time I came to the community. And I said, Are you coming to Shul to God? Everybody told me, Chudachat. I was so excited. The only one that came to the Shul was me and my wife. I called Rabbi Rabbi. I called Rabbi Yushul. I called the Rabbi of the community. What exactly happened? He said, Rabbi, you're going to get to, you're going to, get to know. When Muhammad is telling you what I'm doing, I'm going to present the Talmud. But God doesn't mean that you're going to come. So, this is my condition to decide. He didn't say that. He was quiet. I know something good is coming. And he came and he finished the first Masseret in his life. This time it was not only his person. He was the one that finished the Masseret. Let's go for him. The light of God is only there. Only there. First and foremost, I want to thank the British Barber for the opportunity. Obviously, we're back with all those phone calls in the mornings, his text messages. He's just lacking an email, brother. We've got to get your mail check account and start sending out the mails. Uh, I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to summarize the. Uh, Gemara to me, it's seven chapters. Basically, Karen Kwan describes the daily routine of the Kwanim and the Rabim and their services, as well as, well as their nighttime activities, uh, locations where the Kwanim and the Rabim stood, the, stood guard in the Kamidash, their sleeping arrangements, and what the Kwanim were allowed to do and not to do, such as you know, not sitting in specific places and locations, um, how they would sleep, if they were to sleep in the Kamidash. And let's say if the Kohen became coming, you know, overnight, what he would need to do to purify himself, um, how the uh, the process of the Turmata Desha, basically removing the ashes was done on the main on the main altar and the, the uh, altar inside of the Kamidash, how uh, and then he goes into you know he talks about how a person should you know conduct themselves in the bathroom correctly, how a person should drink the right way. Uh, what the proper uh, path in life is, uh, how to keep someone correctly, and uh, the, it wraps up the first paragraph by talking about how the lottery was performed, uh, you know, for each, each, each one of the Kwanim on a daily basis, and how the winner of the lottery 
would have to prepare himself and wash himself using the kior and uh, how he would remove the ashes. Paragraph number two talks about after the uh, Khan was uh, appointed, what he would need to do exactly to remove the, the ashes, um, what, what the Khan would do, the unburned parts of the uh, Korban on the day before. And it uh, also discusses uh, how new honey logs were brought up, up the ramp, and it mentioned what type of wood was used to, uh, you know, for the sacrifices. One of the, one of the notes talks about that, uh, this is what I really, really enjoyed, it really shows how deep the Gemara gets. It talks about wood that's the wood of uh, the fig tree. So why the fig tree? It says that because Adam and Chava, after they made the sin, they realized they were naked, and uh, they used the uh, leaves of a fig. So we're doing, we're basically we're using the wood of a fig tree to do a tikkun for Adam and Chava. That was very interesting to me. And uh, that's the end of paragraph number two. Paragraph number three talks about and emphasizes uh, basically there was, there were 23, uh, nine Mohanim, and we would talk about how each Mohanim would take one body part of the animal. So for example, the first one would, would take it. Uh, the head and uh, right back leg of the animal up the ramp. The second would bring up the uh, two front legs. The third would bring the tail and the left back leg. The fourth would bring the fans of the chest and the neck. The fifth would bring the two flanks of the animal. The sixth would bring the intestines. The seventh would bring the pinta with the fine flour with oil. The eighth would bring the tamatim, which is 12 loaves of bread. And the ninth one would bring the, nine, uh, the wine. This is the, the nine that I just described are the Hamid offering that we mentioned in Shafrit, Mincha, and uh, uh, right before Musaf and Shabbat. And uh, he wraps it up, uh, the third parrot, by talking about how they would clean the menorah and how they would get the lamb ready before sacrifice. The fourth parrot talks about how the lamb of Hamid was slaughtered and skinned and salted, how they would collect the blood. And how it was applied, whether it was applied by dashing, whether it was applied by throwing, or whether it was applied by pouring. And it wraps it up, wraps up the fourth parrot by uh, uh, talking about what the animal was tied with. Uh, it's very interesting, it talks about uh, is it permissible to tie the animal by gold string? They would say no, because the going do that and it's like those are they would talk about it would be wrapped with silk. They would say no, because the, the guy would, would, would tie their animals for sacrifice with silk also, so we don't do that. So what did they end up wrapping it up with? Basic, basic uh, rope. Um, the discussion that uh, Shomo mentioned about Alexander, uh, Alexander, the question that Alexander kept asking the, uh, the, the, the Jews is like, where did it come from? Where did the transition come from? It's very interesting. There was a discussion about where they were in the Gemara, where they would, uh, they would slaughter the morning uh, offering, which is all based on the sun, they were discussing about northwest and uh, northeast, and then out of nowhere, the Gemara comes and says, oh, since we're talking about the sun, Alexander came and questioned uh, the, the wise man of the south about what higher, the sun or the heavens or the earth, and he started questioning the, the, uh, uh, the wise man of the south. Uh, so that's, that was the end of the third. Fourth, Mary Kamishi, the fifth one. It talks about what the philosophers were said. Um, it goes into the discussion of the Khan Khan, which uh, is mentioned, and uh, that was the end of Perik Kamishi. Uh, Perik Shishi talks about uh, how the Cohen would cle clean up the inner Mizbaya before uh, putting uh, the Ketoret and talks about who and how they would carry the coals for the Ketori. That was the end of 6. 7 talks about uh, the Kohen Gadol. It focuses mainly on the Kohen Gadol, how, how the Kohen was recited, how uh, you know, the, the flag was raised for uh, the Levine. It, 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 it signaled the Levine to know when to sing at the right time. Again, I'll be back and thank you. It was, it's, it's, um, you know, it's exciting to get up early in the morning, seeing that you know there are other people waiting in the room for me when I walk in. And it's, it's a true pleasure, and I really hope to continue learning with everyone. I, I really want to, you know, push everyone to come. You know, the show is offering so much. It's Chabad if you don't come. Baruch Hashem. We have, we have everything we need to be able to get to the next level. Like, Rabbi, thank you very much. Okay.